On this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast, we are going to talk about celebrity demon detox and the apocalyptic spa waiting room. What happens in Demon Sunday School? And Seven Trumpets, the apocalyptic ska band. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Let's do this. This week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. I'm Diana. And I'm Liz. And we're going to talk about season four, episode 21, when the levee breaks. We're so close to the end of the season. Very, very close. Like, I think one plus one is two. I, no math, no math, no. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> so, it's a how- long time no see. I know, right? <laughs> Uh, so last weekend, uh, before we recorded, Liz, uh, came to visit, um, and, uh, we went to a rock and roll show. We did. Um, and I'm not going to say what venue is at, but if you look at our Instagram, you can figure it out because basically I didn't pay to get into the show. I had legitimate tickets, but I figured out how to sneak into the show, not on purpose, but I still feel like I was a rebel and like I was cool. Like I was like on the list, even though like I paid for tickets and I just ended up going some weird ways. And I think people just assume that you were supposed to be there. You were supposed to be there. I don't even know how that happened, but sure. Well, because the wristband was for the drinking. We oh, really yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. Never mind. Yeah. So anyway, so the rock and roll show was a lot of fun. Uh, we, we managed to make it through the whole show, like, like Love good grown ups. The fact that it started at 630 may have had something to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And Saturday we had a lovely pool day. Oh, oh, before we had the pool, we, Diana took me to a really great restaurant. Yes. We went to, it's called Smoke and Ash Barbecue in Arlington, Texas, and it is Tex Ethiopian barbecue. Which sounds to some people like immediately get it. And they're like, oh, yeah, I understand this. Of course, these are also people who know what Ethiopian food is, which is still not a lot. I, it's really, yeah. I, I would say, like, you know, my friends know that, but my friends are urban, you know, but yeah, if I went to my mom and dad and were like, have you had Ethiopian food? They would just make an inevitable joke. Yeah. See, my parents will be like, no, but we would love to try this barbecue place. That's that's the response I got. So, I mean, but yeah, I get it. It's, I, I, am not, I am not an Ethiopian food connoisseur. I'd heard great things and it's something I've been wanting to try. I thought this was a great way to try it. And I've, I've been there a couple of times now and it's awesome. Yeah, and I think it's it really was... Spot. Yeah. And for someone who... I am not a connoisseur, but I've had it multiple times. And but typically, I have a favorite restaurant in DC that I go to over and over again. But uh, this, I thought, was a really smart fusion. Uh, just the spices and everything went well together, and it was just like you know, southern and like just it just made sense and the fucking made sense, and it was delicious. Yep. And then and pool time. Yep, finally, oh, it was such a great pool day. Uh, the weather was perfect. Yeah, seltzers in hand, float, oh, pina coladas first. Thanks, mm-hmm. high rum. And then, <laughs> and then, uh, and then lots of seltzers and floating. Like you do. Yep. I could do. And then, like, somebody had thought we were going to go out on Saturday night. No, no, I knew damn well we were not going out on Saturday night. Um, because, I- Day drinking and like not even like you're drinking heavy, just like drinking in the sun. There's no going out that night. You just can't. Well, and also we went out on Friday night. So if I went out on one night, I'm not going out the other night, especially if I spent all day in the pool. Yeah, that's fair. That's yeah. fair. And we had to get up very early. And even then, um, driving home, like I left very early because I had to go to circus school and it. I was having trouble staying awake. And I was like, oh, I'm going to kill my best friend. No crashing. Yeah, it was very scary. 
And then we we got got dropped him off at his house. And I was like, you don't know this, but you almost died a lot. I assume he I assume he was sleeping. Yeah. I mean, he, well, we were both like, we were listening to podcasts and kind of laughing. Like he, but he sleeps anywhere. Like it just, oh, I envy the sl- people who can sleep. I envy you. Mm-hmm. No, it was a great weekend. And then, uh, the fourth came and I used that day to finish my rewatch of Law and Order SVU, Olivia Benson, Savannah Stitch in the world. And I think IT is a national treasure. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, we uh we celebrated some birthdays in the family. Uh Babe's birthday was last week, so we had a delayed family celebration and my sister's birthday. So we went and had Niwa. And what did you see when you got the Niwa? What car was in the street? Oh, this car drove down the street. It was a Mercedes that was almost fully bedazzled with red rhinestones. And it was awful and spectacular all at once. Hey, so was it a wrap or did somebody individually bedazzle? This was literally rhinestones on this car. Do you think as it drives down the street, it just like flings its rhinestones in its wake? Probably. She was very proud of herself, the driver. And good for her. You go, girl. Do she it. should do be. Do you. That's a lot of rhinestones. It was pretty impressive. Someone had, took a bunch of Addies. It's not for, every, it's not for any, but everybody. That's for damn sure. But yeah. how? How? Yeah, it was special. But yeah, we had an awesome time doing that and very chill forth. And, uh, you know, there we go. And we're here. It's the summer. And we're going to talk about the next to last episode when the levee breaks. So this song title, uh, is a 1929 blues song. But it was also covered by Zeppelin. So, yeah, we get that, right? Uh, this first aired May 7th, 2009. So close to summertime, right? It's not too far off. Uh, this was directed by Robert Singer and Sarah Gamble. And I think we know enough about those two of our favorites. So we're just going to jump right into this episode where Sam is in my favorite bunker. Bobby's bunker. Uh, yeah. And he really wants Dean to let him out. But Dean's like, nope, not till you dry out. So we've got a full... What do you call like what he's talking to? It's not a peephole. Like, what would you call what they're talking through? Well, prison slider? I don't know. Is it, does that have a name? I was just like, what the fuck is that thing? I mean, I know, I've know i seen it like in movies and shit. Right, but- like, in a, like in a speakeasy. You open it. But I mean, I guess it's a pe- is, But it's not a whole... I don't know. All right, questions we'll never learn. The universe will never tell us what that is called. Anyways, go on. So basically he's um there, you know, Dean is basically calling Sam out for being a junkie for demon blood and saying you need to dry out. So this is his version of an intervention. <laughs> that's, that's and, what and it's not wrong. I mean, a lot of things he are doing are very much the affectations of somebody who is going through withdrawal. You know, he's he's Absolutely. trained he is train spotting in this bunker. I am waiting for a baby to crawl across the ceiling. And oh. you know, like and Dean's just like, now nah, man, like you're out. You're out. You're and in Sam, here. Sam's like, oh, but it's just so I can be strong enough to kill Lilith. It's not because I want to. He's like, no, uh, but Dean's like, no, me and Bobby are going to kill Lilith. You're going to be the bench warmer. You get the bench warmer seat to the apocalypse, which I thought was a clever line. So, uh, Sam starts like really showing these withdrawal symptoms, like the shiver, like the cliche ones, the physical withdrawal of the shivering kind of stumbling around. And, but then suddenly he can see his breath and the lights flicker. And we all know that these are that some ghosts. That g- some shit's going down. Ghost. And who appears? Alistair. But is it real Alistair? I'm just saying he appears. He appears. Okay. (laughs) And and somehow, you know, now Sam is on a table and he's got the weird anti-cock smoke mask on. And that thing is just very upsetting. I do not know why it is so upsetting, but it is very upsetting. It doesn't seem very effective because he's very able to move his jaw. It's just like covering his chin. Like it's just... mm. I think maybe they made it for Genevieve. And then they and it fit on her mouth, right? And then like his 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 
big moose head. Like, didn't, didn't fit it as well. And like, and yeah. And like, so they're just like, we can't make another one of these anti, you know how long it took us to make this anti cock smoke mask? Yeah. It took a leather maker like two years, like crafting you're not, it. Like, you're not buying another custom leather cock smoke mask. That's all there is to it. It is not. It, you just put this on Jared Palatiki's face and you deal with it. All right. So he's getting cut up while he's strapped down by Alistair with a scalpel. And uh, his shoes are also off. Like I love like in his head, like he like, also like is now barefoot. And his bleeding from the abdomen is the implication, but you don't really see it. You just see the blood on Alistair's hands. And then, uh, and Alistair's being very cold about it. But then we realize that then none of this is happening at all. Sam's just laying on the bed with his arms held out as if he's being tied down, yelling into nothing. Yep. And we get a pan and like we see it's just like his, this bu- this cot and a bucket. And thankfully the bucket's empty because I think the bucket's, bucket's there for him to poop it. You didn't, you didn't want to see like a little turd <laughs> sitting in there like Sam already <laughs> A, he already had a, a, a withdrawal turd sitting there. Yeah, yeah. I was, unfortunately, the bunker doesn't have a bathroom. What were you thinking? Probably put a bathroom in there, or I guess they just think he's gonna, you know, vomit or whatever. So, uh, but Bobby, now we're gonna go to Dean and Bobby drinking whiskey because, of course, they are. Well, and they're listening to what's going on. I think I'd want a cocktail too if that was happening. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't listening to Sam scream excruciatingly, and Dean asks how long it's going to take, and Bobby's quip was, "Let me look it up in my demon detox manual," which was funny line too. And then I was like, "What? What was that horrible Doctor Drew show? That was it Celebrity Detox? I think so. Okay. Now I'm like just picturing that with like demon detox." <laughs> <laughs> but basically it comes about that they don't know Bobby has no idea how long it's going to take or if Sam will even live through it and Dean definitely doesn't like that response and then uh, Bobby's phone rings and it's Rufus <laughs> Bobby <laughs> tells him to suck dirt and die uh, I, this, these are the friends that you love you love like hmm. like someday you just be really mad at somebody and then they'll call you and be like just suck dirt and die or and call me back and I'm going to kill you and yeah. you'll be like I'm just going to call you back I have something to say yeah I'll call you back anyways you don't mean it uh, yeah and so he does call again but then we cut back to Sam and now he realizes that he wasn't disemboweled by <laughs> Alistair because it was all a hallucination. But now he gets a creepier hallucination in its place of himself as a child. Trying to reaffirm all of his stuff. So basically he's just going through this is these this hallucination is Sam questioning everything he's done, basically. It's not well, the psychological mind trip for Sam right now. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I'm guilty. Like Jessica's death is my fault because if I had left, then she wouldn't have died. Because blah blah blah. We're never going to be normal. Exactly. And like he's so fixated, and we'll see this throughout this episode and the next episode. And we, for the longest time, like he was so concerned about being normal, right? And you know being normal is highly overrated anyhow but then yeah the little boy's eyes flash uh yeah and it's got yellow eyes and so it's just like i'm full of azazel and i am azazel wait but all right no sam yeah no so we get back to um Bobby and Dean and basically Bobby's sharing what the info he got from Rufus. There's been all these 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 incidents in these three different places that are some basically breaking seals. It's, you know, Key West, Alaska, and New York. And uh, he's like, "Where the fuck are your angel friends because this is a problem." Right. And so really like these are all signs of the apocalypse. Yeah. And I realize that we have never actually talked about some of the actual signs of the apocalypse. So we're going to have some lore. <laughs> and we are going to talk about the seven seals. <laughs> So now we have seven seals just lying around. All right. So these that I'm going to talk about are those that are according to the 
King James version of the New Testament in Revelations. And so obviously many different cultures have apocalypse, uh, in their mythology and there are all sorts of signs around the world, right? So, and even within you know, the Judea Christian world, like there are all different things that can be. As we all know, like, as we've seen so many, like, doomsday cults and everything, like, a lot of things can mean the apocalypse is nigh, right? Yeah. So, uh, but these are just going to be the ones that are in uh, that version of Revelations. And so that one is believed to have been written by some guy named John, uh, <laughs> could have been an apostle. He could have been just some dude named John. Like, nobody, like, there's all sorts of people who took credit for this book. And then, you know, just... And I, I want you know, for everyone to appreciate how clear and direct this book was about about what was going to happen. So we could all, you know, if you believe in that religion, you can base all your plans on it because it's so clear and straightforward. So yeah. there's typically, you know, seven signs associated with that. The first one is the arrival of the Antichrist, right? And so what's the Antichrist? Well, that is the person who's going to lead the world astray. And those who follow him will be trapped in a cycle of suffering. And so this is how you know, because it says, and I saw when the land opened one of the seals, ew, gross, leave that seal alone. And I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder one of the four beasts saying, come and see. So I'm like, four beasts, that sounds like four dogs. They're like hanging out and they're like, so now I'm just picturing like one of your dogs, like in Kevin's just like, come and see. And I'm like, okay, Kevin, what do you have to show me? <laughs> so Kevin is saying, and I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Okay, so Kevin has now said that there's a horse and there's a guy on the horse. He's got a bow. Somebody gives him a crown and then he goes forth conquering. Okay. Clear as mud, right? You totally know what's happening. Um, a lot of people have said like, oh, that's Rome. And so Nero, it was the emperor that was going out, blah, blah, blah. But eh, I don't know. Has that happened? I don't know. Uh, so the second one is typically thought to be war, right? And so, and this one says, and when he had opened the second seal, and they don't even say like what, the, like how you open the seal, like he just not, not instructions. There's not instructions, not what the seal is or how it. Just it's opened, right? Yeah. And so the second beast. So I think that's faith. Uh, so now, um, and we should post like all of her these their pictures on there with with these on there. So the second beast is faith, and she has her little rhinestone pink collar on, and she says, um, "Come and see." And so we're like, "Okay, faith. Let's. What do you have to see?" And she's like, "There's another horse, and that was red, and power was given to him." That sat there on to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. Hmm. So reading into that, yeah, like there's going to be a war and uh, there's going to be stuff. But what I hear is Not a war. Yeah. So what I hear is there's a man who's going to ride a great big red horse. So I really want to see a big red horse, like Clifford the dog, but like a horse. Right. Right. And so, and he was going to take peace from the earth. But I think that was just a misprint. Maybe it's peace and he just wanted some snap peace. And uh, he got a great sword. So he got a pretty cool sword. I mean, who doesn't want a cool sword? Like we all want cool swords, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. All right. So the third one is typically thought to be famine, and that's caused in conjunction with the war. With the war, and so when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say. So that's clearly Ash. So Ash is the old man dog, and he's just kind of struggling along, and he's like, "Oh, see." And so I was like, "What? What should I see, Ash? What should I be looking at?" And he was like, "Lo, a black horse." And I'm like, "Oh, a black horse," we say. And then so we sat on him, had a pair of balances in his hand and i heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a denarius and three measures of barley for a denarius and see thou hurt not the oil and wine which apparently means he's gonna ride a black horse okay i got that i'm there with you yeah. he's gonna have a balance he's gonna have a scale yeah cool 
Still yeah. with you. All right. He's going to buy some wheat and barley for Daenerys, which are some Roman coins, right? What? Okay. Uh, don't hurt the oil and wine because that's for the horsemen. And now people are starving. Hmm. Did he buy all the wheat and barley? <laughs> Maybe that was it. Maybe like one, like <laughs> one thing is like one silver coin. It was just like, that's right. all the wheat. Y'all you can't get no more, no more. And you can't have any more barley because we all know how much we all love barley. That is my favorite of the whole grains. Really? No, nobody likes barley. I mean, it's fine. I mean, I I'm like it like in my stew. I mean, I like barley in my stew, right? I also hate that it's really hard to find actual barley. So any of those grains that are great, like barley or farro, you can't always get them at the HEB in Dripping Springs. And I'm assuming the Tom Thumb in Dallas is oh, probably yeah. also not carrying a bunch of farro. <laughs> not the popular grain purchase in Oak Cliff, just saying. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, on the last slide, I was bitching because I had quinoa and I really want a couscous. And I'm like, who am I? Uh, so, all right, the next one is plague. And I think we've all experienced our plague. But so we get the fourth seal. Now we're out of dogs. Sorry. Cat. Yeah, so that's going to be the cat. So the fourth seal is my cat, Anya. So she's like, come and see. And then she scratches you for no fucking reason. But, you know, and she's oh, like, hi. yeah, this sounds like her, right? Oh. And she knocks something off a, t- a shelf. Just like, yeah, whatever. And so this is, she's like, she says, come and see. And she's like, behold, a pale horse. And so we've got a very gothy horse, right? He's pale. He's very pale. And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them unto the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Hmm. All right, so we got death on here, and he's riding a pale horse, which we all know is badass, right? Because death on a pale horse has been the cover of probably 75% of the best metal albums of all time. Like, I'm sure they're somewhere this image is on there, but yeah. To be my side note is one of my favorite um, book series of all times by Piers Anthony, and the first book in the series is called On a Pale Horse. So I always think of that when we talk about the apocalypse. Now that we always talk about the apocalypse, but you know, in general, like apocalyptic talk, if we talk about death on a pale horse, I'm like, Oh, I love that book. So there you go. What's sad is that we often talk about the apocalypse and we will be talking about it a lot more and not just in terms of supernatural, perhaps in terms of the world. I think I've said the world, the word apocalypse more in the past five years than, Oh, yeah. Anyways, um, and we'll get into someday like all the times that people thought we've had an apocalypse and all the people who tried to cause an apocalypse, but <laughs> there's so many of them. All right. So we've got death on his riding his pale horse, bringing hell like a badass. Uh, but he's also bringing judgment because that's the next one judgment, which is just like that's my new death metal band. I hope oh, yeah. you enjoy them. I'm pretty sure that is already the name of a death metal band. I mean, yeah. it it's not. I'm very. If I, I just really hope it's like some like pop band from Sweden. Yeah, <laughs> judgment. Uh, anyway, so now they're gonna open a fifth seal. I'm like, fuck, we're out of pets. And so um, now I'm just you know stealing things. So I've st- I've stolen the, that small dog from next door. I'm um, sorry, dog. Uh, you bark a lot. You're not that. You're not that cute. So uh. all right. So. I, he opens the fifth seal and under the altar, the souls of them. Oh, wait, but that's not a beast. That's just a seal. Okay. So sorry, dog. You're fine. You're fine. You can live. All right. And so he opens the fifth, he opens the fifth seal and I saw under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony for which they held. Blah, 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 blah. Someone in a loud voice says, how long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? On them that dwell on the earth. Meh. And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that they, they should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. All right. So basically everyone who is a martyr yeah. and you died. Now you have to wait for all the other martyrs to die before you can do anything. And you have to put on this white robe. 
So it's like the waiting room at the spa. Like you don't actually get to chill out yet. You got to wait to chill out. Yes. I guess probably like Diana has solved revelations. All right. We are done. Like apocalypse is over. But yeah. So you're, like, you're in a white relax. robe. I can't really relax yet. Cause I'm in this white robe. It's uncomfortable and I got to wait. And it's going to keep opening. It doesn't fit me that well. Like it's going over my hands. I didn't bring my cell phone. Why didn't I bring my cell phone? They told me to leave it. They didn't tell me that I'd be sitting 30 minutes here with this fucking magazine. That's from like 2007 on like traveling to Turkey. And I'm like, what? I don't want to read this magazine. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. All right. And okay, we got we got two more signs left. Those five. Uh six is chaos. All right. We all love chaos. Um whatever. Things are gonna go boom. That's chaos. All right. There's oh no, no, no. there was one light in here. Uh the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. Why do you have a sackcloth of hair? I don't know. Is that like black hole sun? Fair, fair. And the the moon does become as blood. So that is much like my moon tent time, you know, which is finally almost over after. But anyways, yeah, but a sackcloth of hair. Like that's just such a have, weird thing. Like don't have one. Like of why, why would anybody have that? Like even if you're like a wig, wig maker, that's weird. It's just weird. Don't, yeah. but no, don't have that. All right. And the last one. Ah, oh, silence or rebirth. Uh, so this is great. So when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Blah, blah, blah. God comes, does things, then goes and judges people. Uh, but so really what I get out of the last part is there's going to be a ska band. So the <laughs> world is ending and we're going to get, it's going to be quiet for like 30 minutes. And then they're like, and we're going to pick it up, 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 pick it up. And that is when God starts judging everybody and zapping them to the tune of like a ska bit because everybody likes ska. I mean, how can you be sad and listen to ska? You can't it makes you happy. Yeah. So even as your world is going, you're just going to be skanking away. Yeah. So those are the actual seven seals in signs of the apocalypse. All right. All right. So any of those things happen. If you hear a ska band run, just run from all the ska bands. End of the world. End of the world. Oh my gosh. All what? right. So back into supernatural land. All of the seals are breaking fast, but where are the angels? And they don't know. So um Bobby's decided though that he is fucking over this experiment with Dean trying to detox Sam. He's like, look, we, we need to go solve this shit. The world's going to fucking end you and your brother's pissing contest or whatever this is. It needs to fucking stop. This is domestic drama. Uh, let's, let's just let it, maybe he needs to be on the battlefield, even if he's high. I don't know. That's kind of where he got to. That's pretty much what where Bobby gets to on it. That, I mean, well, and he's like, look, yeah. he can fucking kill demons. And it doesn't matter if he's high. Let him go fucking kill, kill demons with us. Otherwise, we're all going to die. Yeah. And <laughs> I think it was, we're going to start to see if like, I don't think Bobby, like, Bobby just wants to let Sam out. He's just yeah. like, <laughs> all the reasons. Uh, he, yeah. he, he can't, he's not into having Sam t- like locked up for sure. But we're going to cut to Sam and he is just like cross legged and, and he is so far from the ice water. And I get it, Sam. I have had this moment where I have been on my couch and I'm like, not going to tell you why, but I have like, like, I am so thirsty. Like my mouth is really dry. Like it's full of cotton. And I'm like, I need some water. And it is so far. And the glass sweats from the ice. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty special moment. But then guess what's our new hallucination? Welcome mom. And I do love the attention to detail where they just have like the burn mark in the middle of her belly. And like bloody burn mark in her belly and her nightgown. Just but everything else is fine. Oh, just fine. this one hole in the stomach. 
Yeah. And she tells Sam that he looks awful, which is a great way to start. And he's like, I know you're disappointed in me. Nah, I, I screwed up. Yeah. And she's like, mm, no, you did the right thing. You're brave. You're being practical. You come from a line of hunters. This is what we do. Dean just doesn't understand. Oh. Yeah. Let me stroke your narcissistic ego. And so basically it's just him like telling himself, you're right. None of, like, which is actually in an addict mind. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can get that. We're like, no, you totally need to go do this. Like, no, 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 you were, you're completely right. Right, right. And, and I thought one of the interesting things that she commented, she's like, look, yeah, our family's cursed, but you can turn it into a gift. And it's not about revenge. It's about justice. I thought those were, because that turns into a different thing, because revenge can sound petty and people can talk you out of revenge, but justice is a different thing. And if he feels like he's meeting out justice, then that's a whole other. Yeah, but he not. It's not justice. It's, and like, I think Dean's going to, you know, bring that up later. But, um, and she says, you know, to make my death mean something. And I'm like, what? Like, this is a, how, what the fuck does this have to do? Like, and in the end, like, I think once we get to the end of the season, you can kind of, I could pull that logic in. But for what Sam knows now, no, this is not, this is not logic. This is just. Just uh, my excuse. It just it's just justifying what he thinks he's yeah. supposed the path he's already chosen, basically. And so basically, she's just like, "Yeah, you gotta go kill Lilith without Dean. You, you're, you, it's it's up to you, and um, don't let anyone get in your way, even Dean." Which is really like, you know, this is not. She wouldn't have said that. I don't think the little I know of her character so far. So there we go. Uh, yeah, no, no, nobody would say that. So we cut back to Dean and he is out standing amongst the, the cars uh, that are Bobby's property and Castiel shows up and um Dean's like, Hey, so what the fuck were you going to tell me in Illinois? And Cass is like, it's not important. It's not, it's not. No. Nope. Yeah. And he's like, Dean's like, look, can Sam kill Lilith and stop the apocalypse? And Cassie's like, yes, but, and then kind of goes on to explain that, look, the amount of demon blood that Sam's consumed, um, he's going to change forever if, if he consumes enough to kill Lilith. Yeah, basically, like, and this, it goes in the whole, I hate this fucking idea, um, but it's like, if he consumes that much, he won't, like, he won't be human anymore. He'll have that much demon blood in him that he will be a demon. Does that happen? I guess spoiler alert, we don't know yet. Like, oh, I hate this. Okay. Anyways, but this is also so cast to be like, you were the chosen one. You, we believe you can do it. You need to accept your role. And, uh, Dean's like, well, but if I, so if I do it, Sam doesn't have to though, is the whole thing. And that, cause that's Dean's motivation is he's so worried about, well, we, so uh, worried, uh, one I, of them. Yeah. There's a lot I, of murder. There's a lot of martyrdom happening on both sides. I, I think. Part of it is that Dean is concerned about Sam harming yeah. himself with the demon blood to do this. Well, and, yeah, I mean, that's big brother shit, right? It's like, hey, I can do this. He w- he'll he be safe. I uh-huh. will. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, Cassiel, Cassiel is like, yeah, okay, well, if you're going to do it, you need to give yourself wholly to the service of God and his angels and swear to follow his will and word. Yeah, so this is a whole bunch of weird shit that nobody should ever say yes to. Like, I don't care if somebody tells you that you're going to save the world or anything. If anybody says for you to swear to follow anybody's will, like your first response should be no, go fuck yourself. Like there's no there is not any fine print for him to read here, which is concerting. It's just yeah, it's pretty yeah, no, much. I, I pretty much like we know like from uh all sci-fi movies, all fantasy movies, fairy tales, whatever, like you know it will get twisted, it will get fucked. There's always a catch. There's <laughs> always a catch. Don't say no. But also like as somebody who just fucking hates authority, no. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So Dean does Dean agrees. And Castiel's like, okay, cool. Wait, we'll call you. Bye. Oh, 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 oh yeah. The other thing that was interesting in there was uh when Cass asked him to swear his fealty oath. Fealty? Fealty? Fealty. Yeah. Fealty. Uh he says, uh, will you obey as swiftly and obediently as you did your own father's? Yeah. And that's like also like you were a little bitch to your dad. Will you be another bitch to us? Like uh. 
Yeah. Ew, that's I don't like that, but I get it. Yeah. So Sam's still in the bunker with his uh, now has a small selection of magazines, including the Weekly Woodsman and the Gun Collector. <laughs> so it was, he was bored, right? He was just like, I can't even fill my bucket. Can't fill my bucket. Apparently, Weekly Woodsman has a really huge publishing budget because they're publishing this full color glossy magazine every week. <laughs> That's for this my. Is, the subscription's like one hundred and twenty five dollars a year, <laughs> and it's like Nick Offerman and uh, like two other people like just fund it actually nick offerman does make it like it is his he's been publishing this <laughs> uh and all of a sudden sam's veins start turning black and he's screaming for help again <laughs> he's getting all veiny so veiny so veiny uh so then we go back to bobby who is totally mocking sam uh, dean for having agreed to castiel's offer he's like you willingly signed up to be the angel's bitch <laughs> dean didn't like that Okay. Can't wrong, can't wrong. And Dean's like, yeah, I don't tr- fucking trust them. They're sh- they're like shady politicians from Planet Vulcan. Another funny line. There's a couple good lines in this one. So, um, anyways, he th- Dean's like, it's my only option to protect him. But then all of a sudden, they realize that it's real quiet down in the bunker. They can't hear you. Like, quiet. quiet. It's kind of like with toddlers. That's also yeah. yeah it's like it's like quiet, you're like. like- or dogs too. Like dogs get too like you know when your dog is sleeping, but when they're like have been really loud and they get too quiet, you're like, wait, something's wrong. What are you doing? What are, are you, you doing? burning down? You burning something down? Yeah. So they run to the bunker and he's like crawling on the floor, like, oh man, he's real fucked up. But then all of a sudden he's getting like thrown against the walls by nothing. That's freaky. So I don't get it. I don't get it. How does a demon blood throw him or I don't understand this. I don't either. It doesn't really make sense, but they decide they need to tie him, tie him up, tie him down to the cot now for his own safety. But, uh, and Dean's like, doesn't like it. You can tell he kind of resists about this, but he does it anyways. Him and Bobby do, but they are rude because even in Sam's hallucinations, he wasn't wearing shoes anymore, but they tie him up with his boots and his watch on. How so rude. uncomfortable. So I uncomfortable. Like, like time off and take those off. Like this seems really rude. I don't know. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not good. And Dean's just real fucking sad. He's like, why, why would you do this to yourself? And Sam's like, wait, is that illusion, Dean? Or, okay. Okay. You're right. Okay. Go on. Sorry. Didn't mean to spoil it. I was confused because this was confusing. And Sam's like, yeah, obviously I'm doing it for Lilith, but revenge too. And Sam's like, Sam's like, yeah, that's why. Dean's like, uh, I want to know the real reason, you know, stopping the apocalypse is supposed to be my job. The angels told me so. But this is all another hallucination of Sam's. It's an illusion. Uh, but I mean, this illusion dean actually has a really good point because he is like why are you doing this for revenge like i'm back from hell like what are you avenging yeah yeah you started to put- yeah. while I was in hell and now i'm back so it's fine like come on let's go do other things but i can't believe like because obviously this is i guess a, a rash part of sam's brain that's talking with other parts of sam's brain yeah. and so like there i guess this is like the rational side being like hey you don't have anything to do this for and the other part is just his addiction i guess so but anyways yeah. real dean's upstairs yeah and bobby's like uh dean are you sure we're doing the right thing here maybe you know maybe maybe we shouldn't be like trying to detox Sam against his will. And uh Dean's like, uh, yeah, we gotta get rid of the freaking the demon blood is what's killing him. And Bobby's like, uh no, I think we're killing him by keeping him tied up down there. I think this is going poorly and he's not gonna last a lot longer unless we hook him up with some that's that sweet, sweet demon juice. So Yeah, I don't like this part of Dean. Dean's like, look that way, you know, if that's if that's what it is, if he dies, at least he dies human. And that's Dean's attitude about it. I don't like it. Well, but I'm also trying to keep, I don't, I don't love it either, but I kind of get it. And I kind of see cause, cause Dean has been to hell with demons. And so he doesn't want his brother to become one of those, but especially when their whole thing has been that his brother doesn't want to be a monster. He doesn't want to be weird. He doesn't want to be all those things. And obviously, but also Dean's mission in life is to kill monsters and bad things. Yeah. It, I think it would, I mean, if it was, I don't want you to suffer in hell that followed. I don't want you to be a monster because I kill monsters. That's just monstrous. 
racist. I don't know. We have to forget about the term for it. Monsterist something. Yeah. But it's not okay. It's, it's rude. You're just being rude, Dean. Uh, but I don't like it. Um, and but then we're going to go downstairs and fake Dean is now calling him a monster and then tells him that you just want to suck down more evil. And I'm like, yes, yes, I do want to suck down more evil. That is also the name of my next metal album. Oh. But yeah, that's the monster. The monster thing is like, the normal slash being normal slash being a monster is like a huge theme through this episode. And uh, I, I think for this <clears throat> tying up this season in general. So um we got, we cut back while that's that. Well, we hear that convert the fake conversation going on. Dean tells Bobby that, look, I'll die for Sam, but I won't let him do that to himself. I won't let him turn himself into his monster. That's what he says, which is hmm. once again, free will, I, man, free will motherfucker. Like, don't take that away from me. Um, uh, yeah. <sighs> So hallucination Dean keeps calling Sam a monster over and over again. Like I just pretended that we were brothers and that we, we were trying to one of the filthy things we hunt and you're nothing to me. It's very rude, very hurtful. And it's, I think things that Sam are, Sam is scared. His brother thinks of him because of his demon blood drinking. Yeah. And his issues with being abnormal. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yep. He rants a bit more and then he disappears as do Sam's restraints. Ooh, they wakes up and his cuffs just pop open and the door just opens and no one's there. And he is pretty fucking sweaty. I'm just going to say. He's he is sweaty. Little, At this point, sweaty. he starts looking like he smells, but also he's like, I'm just going to yeet my ass right out of here. We, we get a glance of Castiel because we know, so we know that Castiel was involved in opening this door and letting Sam out, but we don't know why. And he does not interact with Sam at all. Sam fucking bolts, uh, and the door relaxes itself behind him. And he, Sam manages to like sneak past a sleeping Bobby and Dean, which I was fairly impressed by. Yeah, but also, did you see how much whiskey they were drinking? Like, the fact that these guys, and we will talk about this as the show develops over the seasons, how they fucking function without, like, falling on their faces fucking drunk, because no one can drink that much straight-ass whiskey and, like, be okay. Like, they should... as a child of a person who drinks a lot of whiskey at this point, somebody's calling somebody like, so like Sam would just like be out trying to get out to the car and Dean would be drunk dialing him being like, Sam, I don't want you to be a monster. And like, <laughs> just Sam would be like, what? What do you mean? Monster. And then Sam, I still can't understand the chat you tomorrow. And then like he would hang up. That is what would actually be happening now. But anyways, in this world, uh, Sam just walks past them because they're passed out. Yeah. Then we go cut to another industrial site because they couldn't have an episode without one. And Castiel is there on the water at this industrial site. And Anna arrives and she is not happy. Is it an industrial site or just a bridge? No, I guess you're right. It's an industrial Uh, site. Kind of like an industrial site on the water. I'm sure they process something water-ish. It just looked kind of industrial. And I was like, of course they have one. Every episode. Couldn't go that long without it. Um, and she's like, oh, uh, why did you let Sam out? And all I has to say is, I, I have orders. And she's like, mm, you're following those orders? Sam's drinking demon blood. This is Everything's worse than we thought. Dean's trying to stop him, and you're fucking letting him out. And he's like, okay, so it's like you really shouldn't have come here. Because then, he set her yeah. the fuck up. Fucking snitch. Yep, yep. And these two angels appear and they just like zap her away. And I'm like, why couldn't she kick their asses? Like she's Anna. Mm. But he can barely even watch because he's ashamed of himself because he knows what he did. Is wrong. Well, it should be. He does rock and wrong, Cass. But then he just goes back to staring. Oh, yeah. water. Maybe he's looking for a fish. Well, I don't know. Uh, so we're back at the car. Yeah. And Sam's trying to break into a car, but Bobby shows up and has a shotgun. But Bobby ain't got mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. The scene, Mm-mm. don't like it. No, it's pretty upsetting. Mm-hmm. They're both like tearing up. It's really emotional. Um, Bobby's like, you just need to go back inside. And Sam's like, I know you won't shoot me. And he just like walks towards the shotgun and like has like the barrel on his chest. And Bobby's like, look, we're just trying to help you. And Sam's just like, no, you won't do it. I know you won't do it. And then he grabs the shotgun and hits Bobby in the face with it and knocks him out. 
Yeah. And so as much as I hate authority figures, I also have a ton of daddy issues. And this really bothers me in terms <laughs> of people who like are disrespecting their dad. I'm like, cause Bobby's basically your dad and you're just basically defying him by walking into the shotgun and you're making him feel small. And I think that's why I hate it because by you saying like, I am bigger than you, I can do this. Ugh, I don't like that because you know you're making you're making Bobby feel bad. And don't like Bobby feeling bad. And I certainly do not like you hitting Bobby with the shotgun in the head, which totally could have killed him. Oh. Like you yeah, could the like, car and drive away. You can't hit somebody in the like I know, like you hit each other in the heads with things all the time, but you cannot hit older gentlemen in the head. With the shotgun. He has probably had previous head injuries. This is very dangerous. He's a hunter. It's probably why he sees like his dead wife everywhere. So, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not good. Oh man. Like, do you think it's like, you know, with like football athletes and the concussions that go through, like do hunters have that too? Like there's just like the third season of hunting. (laughs) You have to start, start a union. Um, Start doing cat scans of all their heads gosh oh i mean eh, would be shocking all right so dean and bobby are down in the bunker now because bobby woke up obviously and they're trying to figure out how the fuck sam got out because but they realize that all the devil's traps have been busted so they're suspecting ruby they don't know how she would have done it but they think she did it and they dean's just like well i hope he's with her because first thing i'm gonna do is kill her well, he's like, you know, killing that bitch is next to my to-do list. And I'm like, what else is on Dean's to-do list? <laughs> I I hope he has one in his pocket. Like, like in his pocket. It's like, it's like pick up whiskey, no, pick up pie. <laughs> Just to cross it off. Listen, pie. listen to bad classic rock. <laughs> Find easy women. <gasps> oh, yeah. And uh Bobby's like, well, he doesn't want to be found. Well, no shit. He doesn't want to be found, Bobby. I'm sorry. So we see Sam as as demonstrative of that. We see Sam in a fancy hotel this time. With all the lattice. All the lattice. All the lattice in the world is in this motel. Uh, also, side note, uh, Diana and I did watch these episodes together yeah. with my, our best friend and her husband. And so... This was a main point of contention for about 20 minutes. I think for 20 minutes, we talked about the lattice. We did. We talked about it extensively. We we think this hotel room was designed around the fact that they had the lattice already and they really wanted to use it in a scene because they were very excited to make a fancy hotel room and they decided it needed a lot of lattice work. I don't think I've been in that many hotel rooms with lattice work. I'm just saying. No, but like whatever I am, I have been in a few and it's just like, oh, I am in a Winchester motel. Like I get very excited. But yeah, so the lattice is there and who shows up at that bitch Ruby. And but we also find out not only is it the lattice suite, it's the honeymoon suite. Oh, and he's like, she's like, oh, dang. And he's like, no, not really. This is just so Dean can't find me. But she's she doesn't know how he got out of the bunker either. She just is glad Oops. to get out. And he's kind of pissed because he's like, where the fuck have you been? I've been trying to hold you for like three weeks. And she's like, mm, I've been looking for Lilith. I can't always just like check my voicemail. Like a real fucking bitch about it. She's a real bitch, but this is also your friend that's calling you looking for Coke. And they're just like, hey. And you're like, I think I have a connection. And then he just like for three weeks is like, hey, hey, hey. And you're just like, what? No, I don't have one. And that's why you just stop answering your phone. Yeah, but I thought they had kind of a thing. They did, but also like that's it's not a good thing. Oh, like no. <laughs> I've been, I've also been in this relationship, and so after three weeks, like what? Like I can just wait around for you. Like of course, like, but I'm still here, right? Sure. And she's like, she's like, well, Dean knows you better than anyone, and Sam's like, not as well as he thinks. She's like, this is really sad for you guys, and hopefully, you guys will make up afterwards. So <laughs> then. She, Sam tackles her onto the bed and you think it's going to be sexy time, but he does get the sexy knife out of her boot before he yeah. go ahead. 
Yeah, it's like, no, it's just a very aggressive, like, so he aggressively throws her on the bed and he's just like, no, 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 I'm going to kiss down till I get down to your boot. And he pulls his boot, boot out, which is clipped on the outside. I'm like, that's smart. But then I'm like, what's this? But it didn't seem to be one that actually like opened. Like it was just an open dagger, which seems really dangerous to have clipped to your boot. Yeah. Oh. Like if you turn, like aren't you just stabbing yourself in the leg repetitively? Maybe. I don't know. She's a demon. Maybe she doesn't care. Uh, yeah. And then he cuts her arm and starts drinking her blood. Yep. Uncomfortable. Don't like it. Uh, so we're going to go back to Bobby and Dean. Yeah. And Bobby's like, yeah, we found, they found Bobby's car that, that Sam had stolen. And then there was two other cars stolen. There was a 99 Civic would be super anonymous or an 05 Escalade with rims, which would be a neon sign. And I was just excited because I used to have an Escalade. It wasn't 05, but it was his name. Was did it have neon rims? It did not have, no, it didn't have neon rims. This car, they said the car had rims, which would be like, like in him driving a neon sign. But did you I, ride around in your Escalade Cadillac chicken? Yes. Yes, I did. It was Escobar the Escalade. Oh, Escobar. I I do love, I do love an Escalade. Uh, but so Detective Dean has determined, like he has deduced, we must do the opposite of what Sam wants us to do. And Sam would normally pick the super anonymous Honda Civic, but because he's trying to throw us off the trail, this time it's the Escalade. Which then just goes into these, we're ready for a sitcom. Like, we are ready for this is what he thinks I'm going to do, so I'm going to do this, but does he know that I'm going to do this because he thinks I'm going to do this and I'm going to do the opposite? And then, yeah, so we're really set up for this now. But we're going to cut to Sam and Ruby lying in bed. Like they spent the night together, basically. Like Pillow talk. It's just some pillow talk. Pillow talk. She's like, your appetite's bigger, but that's a (laughs) It's a good thing. It means you're stronger. You're getting stronger enough to kill Lilith. <laughs> and there's not many seals left. <laughs> so it's getting down to the final seal, which is 66, but only Lilith can break it. Uh, and he, she gives her Demon Sunday School story. And- oh my god, can you imagine Demon Sunday School? He's so cute. Oh my god, little demons learning about Satan and just like what they're supposed to do. And they have little like, because you have to like learn stupid songs in Sunday schools. So they have little like songs about like Satan and Lilith and they're just, oh, it's so good. <laughs> and so this gets Dean to figure out, he's like, oh, so that means if I get to Lilith before she breaks the final seal, then I can stop the apocalypse and Lucifer doesn't get out of his cage. Except that was Sam that thought that, not Dean. But yes. uh, Oh, we're good. Uh, But also, like, it's... uh, I don't know. Anyways, so but Ruby, Sam, so Ruby's like, yeah, and I've got this lead to find Lilith. It's kind of like her personal chef. Ew. But what does she eat, Sam? What does she eat? Ah, oh, she eats babies. She eats babies. Yes. Mm, delicious babies. Woohoo. So now we cut to some nurses in the neonatal department. Uh, and one of them is telling the other about how two babies have disappeared recently and like that the nurse that took them said that she was possessed and <gasps> this the nurse she's telling this to is a brunette and keeps saying things describing babies as things like delicious babies are delicious and her eyes turn black and we know she's a demon well and, and if you think about it like we are always talking to babies like we are going to eat them like i just want to eat your little toes i just want to eat your little nose it's like you're so chill yeah so scratch. Yeah. So clearly, we want to all want to eat babies. That is just what it means. And babies are delicious. Um, but Sam has finally showered. Jesus, which also finally. But then he finally put nasty fucking clothes he already had on. Ruby couldn't go buy him a fucking but, shirt. That bitch. No, maybe like he horse bathed it like in there. Like I don't know. Like he could have like washed it in the sink. And also his his hair is slicked back, which I was like, oh, I prefer Jenna. This is like, oh, I like him so much better than the Prince Valiant like parted in the middle yeah. cut that he is wearing this season. Uh, but yes, the slick back works much better. Also, I do appreciate a pearl snap because um, I'm from Texas and that's just a sexy fucking shirt because they're fun to rip off. But yeah, he's putting it on. Um, 
Yeah. And talk about the human gourmet nurse. Yeah. And then we get into some more shit that I hate about the demon blood thing. Cause he is just like, she's like, look, Sam, in order to do this, you have to drink more blood than I can give you. We're going to have to basically kill, you know, the nurse and you're going to take her with us. And I'm like, why can't he just drain her until like she's almost done? And then she jumps into another body and then he just drained that body. And then she jumped into another body. And he like, he don't have to kill anybody. Yeah. That's a good point. Because we have, still haven't gotten clarity on how the demon blood thing works because it's actually just a human vessel or meat suit or a possessed person, whatever you want to call it, holding the demon temporarily. And that the implication is that it, it, it totally impacts all of the to like blood to the cellular level. Like what the fuck? I don't know. You're right. The science does not check out here. The, the science, science the science is not, the science is not check out. And I will, oh, now I want the demons, like the demon laboratory to analyze the blood like us. Like, so after like they leave, like does their blood change back and Sam still suck their blood? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I think after they uh-huh. Done. I, I don't um, get it, but all yeah, right, let's go to, back to Dina Bobby. Well, so now the uh, Escalade's been found, and so we know that Sam ditched uh, that, and so but Dean is still on his trail, and they know that there's been some um, signs of demons n- near Cold Spring. So Bobby's like, mm, Dean, you really need to get Sam back. Don't push him away. Just, just got to get through to him. So go find him. Yeah, they're starting to have like some really like, mo- like we're really seeing Bobby's like relationship is like a father figure here. Like there's a lot of like son chat going and he's just like, all right, like, Bobby's like, we got to get Sam back. We're not, don't just go kill your brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we see Sam leaves the hotel, but Dean was watching in the hallway. So he runs into the room because he guessed right that Ruby is still there and he attacks her and they fight. But Sam arrives and breaks it up and protects Ruby. And yep. Dean's like, Oh, I know I saw how hard you worked to hide. And um Sam's like, Look, I just want to talk. Dean's like, Yeah, sure, we can talk after Ruby's dead. And Sam's like, No, she's gonna leave. And Dean's pissed. He's like, No, she's fucking poison. And um, she's, you know, she's leaves you hanging, she's been manipulating you, and you're just lying to yourself about it. And I just want you to be okay. And Sam's like, No, I need you to listen to me. Um, I've got a lead on a demon close to Lilith. We can go get it. I want you to come with us. And Dean's like, yeah, I'm into it, but no Ruby. And Sam's like, no, we need her. Sorry. She's got to help us kill Lilith. And Dean. Yeah, and- Sam, Sam is just basically like, you're not the boss of me. And- you're not, no, I made my own decisions. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. I want to go kill Lilith. No, Break of course not. My, my way. And, and you kind of see like Dean looks away and there's a, I think kind of a poignant moment. And while I don't, Obviously, fully agree with either one of them here. I think they're both have some element of being in the wrong. It, it kind of like there's a look on Dean's face where he looks like seriously pained by all this, and not like annoyed. Well, and he like, should be, but like sad, like hurt by all of this, which is fair. Like, but to be fair, like for Sam's side, like look, like sometimes, like your little brother or your big brother or your little sister, or your big sister, or your friend, whatever, they want to do something that is really stupid. Mm-hmm. And they're very into it. Like Sam is so into this idea it. yeah. and it's so stupid, yeah. but they love it and they are just attached to it. And at that point, you just say, whatever, we're going to go do whatever you want to do. Clearly, this means a lot to you. To me, that's like that relationship should just be like, and then you at, least you're, at least you're there to support, help or fix yeah. it. It gets fucked. Yeah, because they like doing this combative, like, nope, you're dumb. We're not doing this. Like now they're out on their own. But the problem is, is then Sam says, look, I know you can't, you don't get it, but someday you'll understand because I'm the only one who can do this. And we know this is going to set Dean off about being the only one who can stop Lilith. And Dean's like, no, that's not true. You're not the one. Sam's like, no, you're not strong enough. And that, upsets people so and then but sam escalates it further he's like look dean you always like you were saying you always call the shots you always want me to trust me trust and i need you to trust me on this and dean's like no it's not what you're doing it's what you are 
Yeah, and that's not a good thing. Like, I don't know. Like, your intervention training sucks, Dean. I don't know who took you into this, but like, it must have been Dr. Drew or somebody who, like, some other shyster that fucked up addiction, you know, therapy for people for a very long time. Um, yeah, no, you just, you go with him at this point, but whatever. Um, so we just decide we're going to combat. Well, Dean calls him a monster. He does. As one single tear falls. They got a man tear, a single man tear. And, and Dean, hits, but, Dean gets hit in the face real hard by Sam. You kind of deserve it. I mean, yeah, like at that point, like you know where this is going. If you say this to your sibling, they're like at this point, there is nowhere else they can go besides someone getting punched in the face. Yeah. Yeah. So Dean gets up, hits him back, and they do have a big fight. And they mess up all that fucking lattice. All off. the lattice. All the lattice is broken. Uh, so besides destroying the glorious lattice, lattice, like, I don't know why I'm saying it that way right now, but I can't stop saying it that way. Now it's just lattice. Yes. Uh, nobody can get hit in the face this many times and keep going. Like, they are just cold cocking each other. Oh. It's like, bam! It's, like, it's brutal. That hurt. And then we get Dean's pretty fucked up. He's on the floor. Sam kind of won this fight, and which is kind of surprising. Or it's the demon blood. I don't know. Uh, I mean, or it's the, the level of motivation, the emotional motivation. level of motivation, and physically, Jared Padalecki is a much bigger man than just like even though it's only a couple of inches, like moose squirrel, like you know they're. <laughs> but we get some closing dialogue to this episode. Uh, I think is important. Well, because he starts choking his brother out. Yeah. Like, what, you're choking your brother? No. No, you gone too far, Sam. Like, you don't choke your brother out. Like, no, 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 no. Too far. It's not just like you knocked him down on the ground and he just can't get up. You are like, he's losing consciousness. This is not good. No, bad. Yeah. So he, but Sam gets up and says, you don't know me. You never did. And you never will. You're 12. That is what a 12-year-old says. Yeah, that's sad and shitty, too. You don't know me. You never did, and you never will. That's fucking bullshit. That is somebody who is just insecure and obsessed with themselves, say, because I say that shit all the time. Uh, I know this. I identify with you, Sam. (laughs) But it's shitty. Like, you just, like, it's whiny, and it's gross. It's why you don't say it out loud. You only keep that in your head, Sam. You don't say that out loud to other people. Well, then Dean kind of does almost an equivalent response, though, in part of the, on that level. Because he goes, you walk out that door, don't you ever come back. One, which obviously, okay, this is a repeat of what John Winchester said to Sam Winchester at some point, um, and a trope in so many movies and things that my parents have said to me. Uh, so it's never a good line to no. say this ever. No, never no. It does not. It does not work. Nothing good comes out of his line. But Sam walks out the door and Dean's lying here on the floor where you left me. What the song went in my head. What Pink. is that from? Just like a pill. <laughs> Pink song. Yeah. That's right. Lying there on the floor. Like you left me. Mm-hmm. And scene. And scene. And that's the episode. Oh my fucking God. The Winchester brothers are having juvenile emotional shit fits as the world is ending. This is what happens when men are in charge of the apocalypse. <laughs> in charge of stopping the apocalypse. Sounds like women are in charge of making it happen. Well, that's right. We get shit done. Bitches get shit done. Oh. We're just like, what? We're going to start this apocalypse? Go, go, go. Ruby's like, I am on it. Like, I will, I will do this. Like, Sam, I'm here for you. I've got things to do. Like, yeah, you can't call me. Like, whatever. Like, I had shit to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the men are just like, nah, nobody loves me. And then, <sighs> fucking Winchesters. <laughs> uh, so, um, Diana, um, I think, you know, as we're going into the season finale, oh my God, it's almost here. Yes, it is. So, I mean, what are your expectations? I, I can't say this because I know it's a spoiler because you've seen it because we're. Ah! <laughs> yeah, we, we cheated this week. Um, I um, my expectations. I would be the way I felt. I was very sad at the end of this episode. 
And I feel strongly because I feel like they're both being horrible to each other. And I feel for bad for Bobby trying to hold it together for them. And I am, I really, I wasn't like into Ruby like before, but I didn't like her anymore. Like if you were kind of like, Ooh, I kind of like Ruby. She's kind of bad girl, but it's kind of cool, but you don't really trust her, but you do. And like, I don't know. I was like, okay, I kind of like Ruby. And this episode, I was like, ew, I don't like her. Well, she's manipulative. She's Nobody more- likes a manipulative girlfriend or anybody. Like it just, uh, and so you have an agenda. You, yeah, yeah, you're using somebody to get there and we don't like people being used. No. So my expectations, I think, um, from going into the finale are, I think, um, we need to see a resolution of some kind to Sam and Ruby's relationship, whatever that is. Absolutely personally need some kind of resolution to the brothers because they're both being horrible to each other. And I will say when I was watching this the first time through, because I did watch it twice, I felt very much more sympathetic to, um, to Dean. And I still do kind of, but I also put more blame on him the second time watching than the first. Does that make sense? It does. And I think that's something, you know, as you, which is always interesting with like the kind of that virgin watch, right? Uh, that you don't have those expectations that get built in. You're not really thinking the character development as much. And then like when you go the second time, you're like, oh, wait. I know what the consequence of you saying this is. Right. And so when you know the consequence that's going to happen, I think that changes what it means. But I just, I just felt felt like really felt like the, um, I felt like his motives and his intent were more clear and justified. I didn't, I don't think like the way they talked to her at the end, I didn't think was okay for either one, but they were also like punching each other in the face. So it's kind of hard to like worry about what they're saying <laughs> even though yeah, some but, words are more but now i thought also i mean i have i mean violence is never okay and i clearly have issues that work out with this but i mean i also come from a family where those things were settled like when words stopped working that is how you settled your arguments was mm-hmm. you just started punching each other in the face so i mean yeah, family. That's not the experience that I've had. So, ooh, I can't what? Remember. You and your sister didn't punch each other in the face? Not really. We fought some, but not like that. Like we like rolled on the ground, like pulling each other's hair and shit, but like. Yeah. But, well, anyways, we'll, we'll, go, we'll, um, we'll dissect Liz's childhood at another <laughs> time. Okay. So I think uh, we are super excited for the season finale. Yes. Oh, season four ends. What happens in season five? We don't know. Where are we going? I don't know. It's the future. The future. All right. All right. Cheers, Jerk. Cheers, bitch. Devil Trap Podcast is part of the Ship It Studios Podcast Network. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Devil's Trap Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram, Devil's Trap Podcast, Twitter, Devil's Trap Pod, or you can email us, Devil's Trap at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Don't forget to subscribe, leave reviews, and share it with all your friends. We're available at all your major podcast listening devices, or you can always find us at Devil's Trap Podcast.com. Thanks. Devil's Trap Podcast is a Don't Be a Dick production. Meow. Intro music, arrangement and performance by Dave Cox. Piano arrangement and performance by Bobby Roscoe. Meow. <laughs>